the class is open to 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, okay? I'm just gonna kinda give an introduction, I'm gonna turn over one of my students. Uh, so it's open females and males, okay? I have girls, boys, both in here, all right? So it's an excellent trade, as you see. We, uh, uh, we cut, weld different metals, fix farm equipment, build different things out of metal. It's kind of like carpentry with metal, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna turn this over to uh, Billy Brown and Christian Crest, two senior students, and they're gonna explain about their class. So there's three different types of welding we do in here. There's stick welding, which is what you'll start with. You have a rod, and when, as you're using it, the rod burns down. And then there's MIG welding. MIG welding, you have a gun, and you pull the trigger. And as you pull the trigger, the wire feeds out, and the heat um, burns the wire off, and the wire keeps feeding, and that's how you make the weld. And then there's another type of welding, it's called TIG welding, where you have a little torch, and you have a rod, and the rod burns down as you use the torch, but the rod's separate from the torch, where with stick welding, you have a stinger, and it burns down the rod. So when you start the class, you're gonna start with using a cutting torch. Usually it's the end of the first week or the start of the second week so when you start using the cutting torch. You'll just work on cutting metal like he is over here. And then once you practice cutting metal, you'll have a little test to see how good you can cut the metal and how straight you can cut it. After you, do, uh, after you cut the metal, you're gonna start stick welding. You're gonna do stick welding for a few weeks and then you'll do just a little bit of MIG. And then when you come back your junior year, you can do a stick only class. So you're gonna spend that entire class doing stick welding and you can get your stick welding certification. So after you graduate high school, you'll be able to go out and start a career with welding. And your senior year, you can do MIG and TIG. So you can get certifications in both of those. Right now we're working on our MIG certifications. We got, all of us got one MIG certification before Christmas break. We're about to start our second MIG certification. You have anything to say, Chris? Uh, there's, there's multiple different types of welding. It's not just stick. You'll have multiple different kinds of sticks to weld with, different rods. There's 6010, there's 6013, there's 7018. There's different size rods. And there's different positions to weld in too. You can be in a 1F, which is horizontal. You can be in a 2F, which is in a T-joint weld. A 3F. Are those hot? There's one of the rods now. These are 60. Oh, okay. okay. There's, there's vertical up and down. There's overhead. And there's different gravity welds, too. You can weld in a groove. And every time you weld in a different position, you have to use a different technique. You have to be at a different angle, a different position, and a different speed. So this is one of the rods we use, this is 6010, so this is the rod you'll start with. And then we'll go up to 7018, but I can't pass around the 7018 rods because it's in the red oven over there, okay. and they're hot, and y'all don't have gloves. So this is an example of one of the rods we'd use. We have four other rods we use in here, but they all stay in the oven because they're hot, because it's a different type of rod. And then, if you look over here is our welders. We have large Lincoln welders. And each person, when you start the class, you get your own booth. And that's your booth for the rest of the trimester. Each person has their own booth, and no one else will use your booth. But, what is that, is that 7018? It's a little warm. So there's a 7018 rod. This one's been out of the oven for a while, so it's cooled down. As you can see, compared to the 6010, it's a little thicker. The 6010 is going to be a thinner weld, or the 7018 would be a thicker weld. You want to go get some, like, some examples out of the scrap? Yeah. He's going to go grab some examples of some welds out from our scrap trailer. But basically, here's two of the kinds of rods. These are going to be the rods used the most. And then some, else, some more stuff about the welding shop is this is a shear. Over time, you might learn how to use the shear. But we'll put metal in here like he did earlier. And there's a little lever over here. You pull it down. It closes down and it cuts it. Instead of using the cutting torch, use this just to get guarantee you get a straight cut and it's smooth. You don't have to worry about any leftover metal that's burnt on it. I will say a few things. Uh, you won't earn your pilot's license in here. 
However, a lot of the information you do talk about in here, uh, including weather, particularly in the third class, second or third class, you'll learn a lot of stuff that you're going to need to know on the FAA uh, pilot, private pilot written exam, of which I've taken. I've also completed my pi private pilot training, so I, I can attest to, to the fact that the information you weren't, will learn in here is useful. If you guys don't know, you can fly a plane at the age of 16, so you can you can fly a plane, actually you can start flight training whenever, you can solo at 16, so you can fly a plane before you can drive a car, which is something not a lot of people know. So this is the engineering class at EC3. Um, for your first two years, you actually won't be at EC3, you'll be at your home high school taking intro to engineering, um, and that will teach you everything about the math and the science, the basics of engineering, the engineering process. Um, you will have a couple of projects. One of them is a reverse engineering project where you will take any item, say that cube, you'll measure every part of it and then you'll model it in um, a 3D modeling software on the computer. And here's something that Raymond made. Which is a sword. Yeah. He modeled this sword. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you can make all kinds of things in this 3D modeling software. And if he wanted to, he could 3D print that or cut it out in that CNC machine. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of um, getting all of your measurements right, and he got all the angles, he rounded everything off. Um, as precise as possible. Yes. Um, so that's a big part of engineering, actually, is just designing the product that you're intending to make. Um, and then when you get to your junior and senior years, that's whenever you'll come to EC3. Uh, for your junior year, you'll take um, electrical engineering, so that's circuits, how computers work. You'll work with these breadboards. Um, they're kind of like a giant circuit board, similar to what would be in your phone or a computer. And we'll work with those making circuits that um, use different inputs to give us a desired result. Um, and then your senior year, you have several choices. You can take um, civil engineering or mechanical engineering. Civil is working with um, construction and building. Uh, mechanical, you work with gears and engines, things like that. Um, you, right now we're in the engineering capstone, so this is how you complete your pathway. You get a certification telling the workforce that um, you've basically gone to a trade school and you're ready to go into the workforce if you so choose. Um, so right now we are working on a project where we're solving any real world problem we want to. Um, there's a group working on fixing airplane air conditioning and cre creating a cheaper alternative. Um, somebody who's working on an automatic release blind for our doors whenever we have a lockdown. Uh, so all of these things that have issues in today's world, we're able to solve them uh, using the engineering process. We have a budget, we buy materials, and we'll design a better product. Um, and then if you don't want to do capstone, you also have the choice of doing co-op your senior year to complete your pathway. So that means for third, fourth, and fifth block, the last half of the day, you go to work at a nearby factory like Matalsa or Alltech. Um, you'll work there getting paid about $15 an hour, um, and it's like a paid internship. You'll learn more about engineering, you'll work under actual engineers, um, and then after you graduate high school, if you want to, they often offer you a job where you can work up to be an engineer without even going to college. Off the bat, what's going to be different from your home high school versus here? So you're going to have more personal responsibility and you're going to, have, you're going to get a better use of time management. So you've got to think, you're in, this is college courses. You have professors, you're going to have a lot of online work. So with this, you're, going to ha you're not going to have your professors telling you, hey, Today, this is due. A lot of times in the syllabus that the professor will give you like day one, it'll have when you have a test due, and they won't say when you have that test until the day of or the day before. It's happened to me more times than I can count. So you won't be at your home high school as much, but you are still more than welcome to take classes and extracurriculars there. This is sports and clubs, all of the above. So along with this, you're going to graduate with an associate's degree. This is a two-year degree that will most likely transfer to any college.
So important to note, um, cost is, is significantly less than regular college classes, and you do get free textbooks if you do attend the academy. Some of the qualifications are on your ACT, you must score an 18 on English, 22 on math, and a 20 on reading. And you must also have completed Algebra 2 by the end of your 10th grade year. This is why a lot of kids end up doubling up in math. And then an application is also required to get into the academy. Important skills to have is good time management. You won't have teachers telling you what to do, and you're going to have a lot of free time and a lot of work. So you have to be aware and get it, your work done when you have it. You have to be proactive and have a can do attitude. <coughs> you must be on time. You don't miss any lectures or any notes. Everything is important. And do not procrastinate or wait until the last second. Work in different classes can call it fast, and it's important to lock in and get it done when it, it, when it is assigned. And you, because you don't want to wait until the due date comes up to do it. So with this, you're going to have some pros and cons. So a lot of the pros, you have John Harden, North Harden, and Central Harden. This is a big melting pot. You're going to see people from other schools, and you're going to get really close to them. So another thing, morning classes. I only have two classes a day. So typically, my classes will start around 9.30, and they'll end around 11.45. So he'll only have one class a day for his Monday, Wednesday class. Another thing is study time. So after your classes are done, if you're not taking any other elective classes, then you'll have study time for the rest of the day. This is time to get work done, time to do fill out applications for things that you want to do, and a lot of times, if you don't have classes, hang out with each other. Another big pro, senior year. If you don't have class, easy enough, you don't have to be here. And then you get to schedule your own classes. So I know in high school, you're going to get to schedule your electives, maybe a math class or two. But here, you get to choose what time you want a certain class and what class you want. And then along with the pros, you're going to have your cons too. It is a somewhat harder workload. It is, it's again, a go at your own pace class. You need to be able to lock in and get this stuff done. You're going to have people to help you, but it's a lot of do-it-yourself work. Another big con, junior year, if you don't have class, you still have to be here which I'm a junior, so that is like a decent downside of it, but it also brings me closer to people. And another con, you are less connected from your home high school, but that's only if you disconnect yourself. Remember your roots from your home high school. Remember that that's where you, you're still at that high school. You're just taking classes here. That's how you have to look at it. This is our uh, walk-in. Um, if you want to pull that handle and open it up for us. It, yeah, right there. And if you look straight back, you can see our freezer, and it's, you can see it's at two degrees, so it is freezing, and you don't want to be in there for very long. So then if you walk back over here, here if I could, I'm so sorry. These are just utensils. This is a blast chiller. Makes things really cold really fast. Um, your average microwave, you guys can come on down now. Um, this is our ice cream machine. This is our dry storage area over here. As a food service operation, we also buy things in bulk. It's a lot cheaper for us, and it, we, we end up using it one way or another. So this is our leftover cooler. It's kind of empty right now. You would go through the, the book on making sure you know what temperature it needs to get cooked at, because like you don't want to make chicken undercooked, right? So instead of cutting it open, you can just take the thermometer, put it in it, and it's only 165. This is our dish machine. It's much like what you have at home, except it's just industrialized. So you would put dishes on this cart tray and um, push it through, and within 30 seconds, they're clean. And they come out over here. And then these are our stove tops, and over top of those two, we have some new broilers that we just got. This is our free compartment sink, so you wash, rinse, and sanitize for like pots and pans and things that don't This is called building construction technology, okay? Building construction technology. It is by far the coolest class that there is that AC3 has to offer. It is so cool 
that, that we're actually we, we're not we're so cool we can't even be stationed over here we got to be stationed over at ECTC so our shop is over yes. at the college all right so whenever you uh, uh, take my class you actually be bust over to the college and that's, that's where uh, you'll come in there and you'll begin to learn about uh, construction all right so the first class you take with me is just is just intro to construction and you learn how to uh, use power tools and hand tools and uh, drills and table saws uh, just uh, and hand saws uh, anything that you'll see on a construction job site you, you learn how to use all those tools and then we after you learn how to use the tools we begin to build things uh, like bird houses and step stools and, and tool boxes and so forth you, you actually build uh, small little projects and then a after your first class uh, which is intro you take carpentry all right what does a carpenter do what does someone what's a carpenter do Go ahead. Build houses. Builds houses and so forth. So inside our shop, you'll actually build walls. Uh, you'll build a floor. You'll build walls. You'll build ceiling. You'll put roofing on it. You'll put windows and doors in, just like you would on a, on a job site uh, out here building a house. And, and then the third class you take with this is electricity. All right, electricity, anything inside your house, receptacles, switches, lights, uh, smoke detectors, electrical panel, anything inside your house, you'll know how to wire. These two guys over in my class right now, anything in your house that you got that's electrical, these two, these two guys can wire up. Right, and they, they, they had the knowledge to do that, they've been trained to do that, and, and they, can, they can wire anything in your house. And, and nothing, nothing inside your house is going to intimidate them because they, they already know what to do. And the fourth class you, you take with me is, is, is HVAC and plumbing, where you learn about hot and water, cold water and sewage and your heating and cooling. Uh, now, e even if you don't want to go into the construction field, this is very beneficial to you. All right? Have you guys ever paid somebody to come and work on your house? All right? Is it ever cheap? Never cheap. Never cheap. Never cheap all right? All right? I own an electrical contracting business, uh, so whenever one of these guys called me to come to their house, I charge them eighty-five dollars just to show up. All right, all right. I got a student uh, that that just graduated with me in, in May. I sent him out here to this battery plant that they're, this Ford battery plant in Glendale, just ten minutes down the road here, and and, and from and he has made sixty-two thousand dollars as an eighteen-year-old kid. All right, I have his paycheck in my back pocket. Last week. He, in one week, he made forty-two. He made four thousand two hundred and thirty-four dollars. I have his paycheck. All right. He wanted to rub it in on how much more he makes. And he made more in one week than I made a month as a teacher. Now these guys may be loaded. I don't know. They may, they may make two hundred thousand dollars. But me as a teacher, I don't make that much. Uh, so, uh, so there's money to be made. Point is, there's money to be made. Now, now is it typical for him to make as an eighteen-year-old kid to make four thousand dollars a week? No, it's not typical. Uh, they needed they needed people so bad uh, that they just threw all kinds of money for him to show up. But but every day that he's worked this year, every day he showed up, they paid him a hundred dollars just to show up that day, and then he gets his pay on top of it because the, the construction trade is needing people so bad that they're throwing lots of money out there uh, uh, to it. So uh, so the point is if you. If you want to go into the trade, it's awesome. And but it, it also the point is uh, taking our classes. If you don't want to go into construction trade, you're going to eventually something's going to break down in your house. If you know how working on it yourself, then you'll be able to fix it. This is our media arts classroom. So what we do in this class is we do uh, a lot of this, a lot of filming, a lot of dealing with um, well camera equipment and things like that. Uh, we work with HCEC TV, which is our district channel. Uh, you all might have, you may see them around and about at your school at some time. This is North Middle, right? So uh, basketball games, uh, the concerts, band concerts, things like that. We have our folks that work in here. They go out and f help film those events. Um, we've also got folks over at the studio that, that film those as well. Um, so we in here kind of hone our talent and and learn how to use and operate the the equipment to then create things so this class that you're in right now is our college dual credit um, film class so what they've been working on is working on scripts how to write a script to then be filmed later so that's that's what these guys have been working on but they have worked on some uh sh well a short um 
a short replica scene. So they, they took a scene and then had to recreate that shot for shot um, and then put, piece that together and edit that. So we learn how to edit videos, we learn how to film, we learn about our audio. In intro class, in uh, the very first class, we deal with photography. We've got uh, digital cameras that we use to get our, learn how to frame a shot, uh, how, to, how to make it look good. I know um, some of us in here had done that. And then we start to move into, into our video and then our video editing and start, um, start messing around with that. So these guys, this is the second level course. They're working in um, with the dual credit and then it become, it's still dual credit the last two classes. Uh, and they will start work making short films. That's what they'll start working on, is, uh, is making those. We have computer programming, um, network administration, web development and administration, network security, and informa information support and services. Right now, the class we're in is computer programming. We use Python to code many a thing. Network administration, you... Um, Make sure the website is working. Make sure that nothing wrong, nothing is going wrong with it. Network security, you secure the network. You're just making, making sure nothing bad happens with the information on that website. And information support, that's like um, IT, helping people with their computer problems. You guys can be network engineers, which is very well paying. You guys can be in the ID department of any business because more people need to know how a computer works. There's just a bunch of different job opportunities that you can take that not a lot of people have. And phlebotomy is sticking people with needles, drawing blood. In EKG, you'll be taking EKGs on each other, then going to clinicals. After a little while, phlebotomy is the same. You'll be sticking each other after learning how to stick. Uh, you'll be going to clinicals. You'll be sticking people. You need 40 sticks at the end of the clinicals. So Ms. O'Daniel, she, she teaches the phlebotomy and EKG. She also offers two other courses. She offers pharmacy, which if you're trying to go into any kind of pharmacy technician, pharmacist, or even like certain pathways of nursing, uh, she offers the pharmacy class. So you will be doing clinicals at the hospital and at a retail pharmacy such as Walgreens or Apothecare. You'll be uh, learning a lot of different things in pharmacy. Um, she also offers a class for your senior year T3. You have to apply to this class, but it's called a clinical medical assisting. It's one of our newer classes. Uh, you basically assist doctors with injections and you basically work under doctors there. Your sophomore year, you learn a lot about your basic automotive, your tire changing, your oil changing. Everything you need to do when you first get a car, you learn how to do. So does anybody want to be a mechanic when you get older? There's a few of y'all. There's, there, yeah, there's more than last class for sure. So I don't know if any of y'all how old y'all are, but in two years, everybody's going to have a car. You're going to have to work on your car eventually, or you're going to have to pay somebody to. So it's better to know how to do it than to be out money paying people. So like here in front of you is an engine trainer. So it's very cool. The cool thing about this is it's got a trainer on it. So as you're running, if you start unplugging stuff, it'll tell you exactly what's wrong with it and exactly how to fix it. So it's just like a car. If you want, you can press that gas pedal right there. No, just push it with your foot. The gas pedal. So it runs just like your everyday car. So you, we have very cool trainers like that. We got that this year. And like I said, it's very cool. Pitt has used it a lot so far teaching us how to do like oil spark plugs and stuff. You also have your electrical trainer there, the blue thing. It'll show you how to run your lights, your headlights, your brake lights. It'll teach you turn signals, why wires work, why wires don't work. But there behind you, we have a four post lift. That way, if you get a car in or a heavier pickup truck, that way you can work on it and be safe. That's also called an alignment rack. You learn how to do your alignments on your vehicles. You learn how to change your tire rods, your tire rod ends. Everything that makes the car steer and drive, you can do on that rack. So here behind us are two post lifts. We got four of them. You learn very multiple different things on two post lifts. Like right now we got a truck up here that we're doing an oil pan gasket. 
So you have to pull a transmission to get to an oil pan gasket. You'll learn how to do that stuff as you graduate and get older in the school. So over here we have a tire changer. So that is the very first hands-on thing you learn to do is you learn how to change a tire. So as you come to automotive, no matter if you really want to work on cars or not, you're going to have to change a tire at some point in your life and you're going to have to plug a tire. So that is the very first thing we learn. We learn how to change tires and plug tires. Everybody in this shop right now is technically a certified entry level mechanic. Your senior year, you take an ASC test before Christmas break and it'll give you your certifications to go to Swope or anywhere and get a job. I would accept it. It's very good money. I think they offered us all 16 or $17 an hour. It's good money to be in high school making. Another good thing is, is if you go somewhere and get a job, if they want you to have higher education, they pay for it. No loans, no student debt. Like I work at Boycat. I'm gonna be a diesel mechanic in two years. They're paying for my school, 100%. I don't owe a penny, and I get an associate's degree in science. So, if in five years I don't want to be a mechanic, I got an associate's degree to fall back on. Intro to criminal justice. Basically, you learn the basics of what you're doing. You learn everything that you can and cannot do as a juvenile, which is you all in your age right now. So, say you commit a crime like truancy or a status offense like running away. You can get in trouble for that now, but the day you turn 18, you will not get in trouble for it because then you are a legal adult. You won't get in trouble for it. Then you also have, you learned all about the Constitution and your constitutional rights. Many people don't know about all their constitutional rights, so this is a good class to take if you just want to know a little bit more. Like your Fifth Amendment right, you have the right to remain silent at all times, unless your lawyer says you can talk if you ask for one, mm -hmm. then you can talk. But if you don't want to talk to them, you don't have to. Then we will move on up to your second class, which is corrections. In corrections, you learn everything that happens inside and outside of the prison. So you learn about your prison intake, where like they take your fingerprints, they search you, they'll make you change, then they'll send you out to the main population of the prison. Um, inmate code is basically how the inmates will talk to each other or disguise every, things that they have smuggled into the jail. Say I have smuggled drugs into the jail or I have found drugs, I will call them like candy or something random that only the other inmates know so the guards don't know that I have drugs or say I have a tattoo gun tattoo guns are highly also illegal in the jail system one they're not very sterile so don't get tattoos while you're in prison um, when you're going in if you do have tattoos they will mark your tattoos in your pamphlet like when they intake um, then when you go to leave if they notice you have another tattoo or a new tattoo they will add three to six months to your sentence, depending on how many tattoos you get. Um, you also, at the end of the year, you do a two and a half week project. You play Minecraft for two and a half weeks. You are gonna get graded on building your own Minecraft prison. So basically, you get to pick low, minimum, max, or super max prisons. And you just get to build your own prison, and as long as it has these list requirements, doesn't matter how big it is, doesn't matter how small it is, as long as you build your own prison. I'm gonna go ahead and continue with law enforcement. Um, in that class, we talk about the responsibilities of being a police officer. We enforce laws, provide services, prevent crime, and preserve peace. During that, we talk about laws that you can, that, that have you and do like constitutional rights for that. Um, we also have Wellness Wednesday in that class, which is everybody's least favorite thing to do in the beginning because they don't understand what it is and how hard it actually is. It's not hard at all. Um, that means every Wednesday we talk about and do physical tests um, as what like police officers have to do during police academy and trainings. Um, that physical test is not hard because all your teacher makes you do is participate for it. Um, next we have criminal investigations. Uh, that's the last class and you can only take that as a senior to make sure that seniors get to end up finishing up the pathway before they graduate. Uh, during that class we talk about the types of investigations which are the read method which is a more aggressive approach to it. That's where I don't want to be your best friend, I just want you to answer the questions I have for you. Um, and then we have the peace method which is where I would try my best to be Delaney's very very best friend so she tried to tell so she, I try to get her to tell me every single bit of information she has. Um, during that class, we talk about fingerprinting, lifting, and analyzing, and work on that. Uh, we draw crime scenes, process evidence, and photograph crime scenes.